This is an overview of the SRM DB002 generative MIDI tool for Ableton Live 12 and up. It is a Max for Live MIDI tool that generates house drum patterns. Uh, all you need is to have um, a, a drum rack in your project and you know you want your typical house drums in there and once you've installed the plugin or sorry the MIDI tool uh, you can go to a clip and I, you'll see I have an 8 bar clip already prepared. Uh, 8 bars is ideal for the DB002 because internally it generates 8 bar loops and so if you set a 2 bar clip up you'll only get the first two bars of what's essentially an eight bar loop and there'll be less variation. If you do a 16 bar clip, you're just gonna get two copies of the same eight bar loop. So just go with eight, it's probably your best bet. You can always clip or crop it if you want to. If you don't like parts of it, you can make those adjustments after the fact. I also suggest you turn on a groove. I like to use Notator 16C Swing, but you probably have your own preferences. So make sure you have a groove ready to go before you start previewing the beats or that you probably won't like the results very much. Now, on the, uh, in, the, in Live 12, uh, we now have these um, MIDI tools tabs in our clip panel, and there's this generative tools tab. Uh, you select that tab, and then you drop down this menu, and you choose SRM DB002. The very first thing you have to do before you can really play with the tool is you need to map these drums to your drum rack notes. So, um, you know, your kick, your clap, your hats, that's all pretty obvious. You might have a snare. Um, percussion can be whatever you want, rim shot, cowbell, you know, noises, foley, whatever. Percussion group, are the, the, this kind of stands out from the other drums. All the other drums are um, generated independently, but the percussion group is done as sort of one cohesive group. So there's never any competition between the drums. They sort of, maybe they, maybe it might be a stretch to call it call and response, but they do sort of like a call and response or uh, more of like a flowing kind of pattern across those three drums that you've defined. Um, so I like to use them for toms, but you could do whatever you want there, obviously. Um, so you get that set up, it takes a little bit of time. It's global settings. So um, you want to be very consistent with your drum racks that you're going to use with this because if you're flipping between two drum racks with completely different drum mappings, you're going to have to remap the notes every time you switch back and forth, which is not exactly saving you a lot of time. Um, you know, it's, it's nicer if you just have, I just use one drum rack and I just change out the drums in it is what I do. Um, especially because now there's like the similar sample features in Live 12, um, so you can get your beat going and then you can start tweaking the, the sounds that you're using and kind of come up with really unique stuff every time. So uh, we'll go ahead and just generate a, a beat. I'll get into these other controls shortly. Um, so we you know just push the apply button. We have a beat with all these parts in it. A little busy, you know, maybe that's more than we really want. We could just generate the whole thing over again. We can say, you know what, I like that closed hat pattern. I'm gonna keep that, so I'm gonna lock it. And I say, I don't need the percussion part, so I'm gonna turn those off, but I'll keep the percussion group, which is my toms, I like that. Um, well, let's listen to it and see if we like the toms. Yeah, I like those toms, those are good, so let's keep those. Um, open hat, clap, kick, they're not gonna change a whole lot. Um, there's some variance in, in those, but actually I don't think there's any in the open hats. Uh, the kicks, mainly you can get like turnarounds at the end of the eight bars um, that will sometimes come up randomly. Like for example, we could, we could unlock that. Let's lock everything but the kick and we'll just try to generate it a few times. We'll hit generate them. Mm. It's not super frequent. There's there's a turnaround. Now that's probably gonna really compete with our snare drum, but we can listen to that. Um, I don't know, I had the, the levels down pretty low to make this recording, so I couldn't really hear exactly how that played together, but I would probably, let's try regenerating the snare. That's okay, we can keep that one. 
Um, so you can kind of see how things are, are, are playing out here. Um, there's uh, the density and bounce controls. Density is like how many notes per bar is the generator gonna create on average. Um, and bounce is the bias towards the, the 16th notes in between the, um, the, the eighth notes, giving you more of a swingy, bouncy kind of feel. You can dial that up and down. Um, like, let's say, if we're gonna generate percussion one again, let's crank the density way up. You can see how many times this rim shot is firing now, right? And if we drop the bounce way down, it's, it's super robotic sounding, it's not very interesting. And then I, you can get a little crazy and go fully onto the, all into the bouncy notes if you want. But I like a little more variation than that. I'm not sure I'm in love with this beat, but you get the concept in terms of how you can generate these, uh, these beats. Um, once you are happy with the beat, uh, keep in mind that these selected notes will be replaced if you were to regenerate anything. Now, with the locks on, it won't, it won't do that, but if you uh, switch to another generator and, and ran generate, or if you unlock these and hit generate on the DB002, you'll lose your whole beat. So you want to kind of be careful when you've got it complete, just click off the notes there and now you have um, manually manageable notes that you can, you know, maybe you want to strip out a few of the notes or maybe you want to like break up a repetitive pattern so that it's different in the first four bars from the second four bars, something like that. I, I often find myself doing a little bit of post-editing after the generation, but you can get it pretty close with the generator so that you don't have to do a whole lot of work. And of course the generator gives you good ideas and sometimes you can just strip them down, which is a lot easier than, than coming up with something brand new to, to create some variation. Um, so anyway, so uh, DB002 is available on GitHub. Uh, you can download the AMXD file, follow the instructions to install it. If you encounter any bugs, please file an issue. If you wanna make contributions to the project with a pull request or even a, a feature request in the issues, uh, I might be able to, to handle that. It's helpful if you wanna ask for features, it might be good for you to understand the structure of the code so you know what's possible and what's not possible. Um, but it's all there for, for you to inspect and to fork off and, and modify. So I welcome any contributions. Thanks.